Live from the studio at the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies, this is Have a Bible Question, where you are part of the program. Now, let's go to the Bible for answers to your Bible questions. I did see another question on oh, there. Oh, do we have another? Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't um, see it. Back up a little bit to Evan. It was in a big old long novel that he wrote there. But. Oh, another question. More personal perspective. In Galatians 6.10, thanks for bringing this up. I, I, I completely overlooked it. We are commanded to do good unto all men as we have opportunity. However, as I am sure you have all experienced, there are some individuals who will take advantage of your kindness. My question is, is there a definitive dividing line between doing good for others and simply allowing others to take advantage of us? And if so, how can we identify? Well, the answer is in Matthew chapter 25 for me. Okay. All right. When you go to Matthew chapter 25, that's that passage beginning in verse 31. When the son of man comes in his glory and all holy angels with him, then sits on his throne of glory and all the nations will be gathered before him. He will separate one from another. Jump on down. Uh, when he says verse 35, where I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty. You gave me drink. I was a stranger. You took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me and they said, when do we do that Lord? And his answer was in as much as you did it. Verse 40 to one of the least of these brethren, you did it to me. And so, you know, in Galatians chapter six, verse 10, it says we are to do good to all that's some people want to draw a line there and say it's only for the church, but it's not. It's it's all men, especially the household of faith. And so my this is now this is my opinion on this. I don't want to draw a line. If somebody asks of me, or if I have an opportunity to help somebody or give something to somebody, I'm gonna do it. Well now there could be some limitations on that too though. <laughs> I knew you'd push back a little bit on that. Well, well, we have to, to some degree, because I know people that really struggle with this idea. Um, one, if we are enabling p bad behaviors, sinful behaviors. If you know, if you know you're enabling bad behavior. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, if it's, well, I mean, there's an old Testament. I know it's old Testament, but old Testament principle of a man doesn't work. He shouldn't eat. If it's encouraging slothfulness, uh, laziness, um, if it's contributing to, um, you know, them not taking their responsibilities, then I think there would be a, a time to say, no, I'm not going to do this because to him that knows do good, do is not to him in a sense. That's a difficult thing because to find good there. There you go. And it's a personal call. It's prudence. It's judgment call. Mm -hmm. And can you possibly do everything that you know that would be good to do? Is there ever a time that you take time for yourself when you could have been helping somebody else, Troy? Uh. I'm going to get in trouble if I answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you think about it. I mean, there there are times, and, and, you know, my wife and I have talked about this because there are some times that, especially in ministry, you have to put boundaries. And then we would be like, well, we want to have at least one evening at home alone for each other, you know, and we want to spend time for ourselves. And then we're like, well, I don't know. Should we? If we have the opportunity to have a church member over or somebody before Bible study ministry. every single night of the week, yeah, ministry of some kind, but there's also the concept though. We need time for each other. Amen. Ooh, what about this? What about Jesus going alone somewhere to pray that he could have been out feeding somebody, you know, so raising somebody from the dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, he could have, but I mean, it's, it's a little bit subjective. Yes. And I think sometimes people use this passage to guilt people uh, into into servitude and doing what they want. Uh, but I also think they use this passage sometimes to get out of it. It's like, well, we don't know what that person's going to do, so I never give any money or anything to those person because they're just going to take and spend it on drugs. Well, that happens too. I'm just but, saying it, yeah, it's, I mean, both, it's used on both ways. So. Um, but I think we got to be careful not falling into guilt too much. What do you think, Ray? I have an interesting passage to bring up. Bring it on. All right, Matthew chapter 5. Verse 38 and following. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him all the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. 
Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Very good. So keep getting taken advantage of. There are times, I believe, in the Christian life where doing good unto people, we're going to get taken advantage of. That's right. Of. I agree with you. That That's going to happen. Now, to let it happen again and again and again by the same person is not necessarily wise or good stewardship of the things that we have as Christians, but it's going to happen from time to time because we're to do good unto all people, especially those of the household of faith. It's going to happen from time to time where we lose things and people take advantage of us. That's just part of being a good person and a good Christian and have that loving and giving heart. Amen. Or yeah. like my granddad said, that dog ain't got to bite me twice. No, it hurts. Yeah. You know, you know so. do good unto all men, especially those household of faith. We have a heart. We have a mindset of doing good. At all times and, and ready it, to do good. Yeah. And it means we will be taken advantage of. Right. Do we have to enable sin and sinful behaviors though? No. no. Uh, and so is there a time to draw the line? Right. And I he, think we're all in agreement in here. Even Jeff, who very seldom will say no to anybody. <laughs> is there a time to draw the line? You know, if, if it's down to, can you provide for your family or not? Or not? Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, subjective. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, because it, it's not a good thing to get to a point. You can't feed your own children because you've done given all your money away <laughs> to somebody else. Exactly. Uh, you know, cause we can't possibly do everything that we know is good. There are time limitations. There are financial restrictions. There are personal responsibilities. Yeah. And right. so, you know, and I think it's kind of like on giving, if somebody's worried about how much, is enough to give, then there's a heart problem. Yeah. Because I think when your heart's right, you never can give enough. You always wonder. And I think that's what happens when we're right about doing good. We always want to do good. We want to help people. And honestly, our heart's probably that we wish we always wish we could do more. Amen. But what about all the people that Jesus chose not to heal? Wouldn't that have been a good thing? <laughs> there you go. I, I mean, just, just a thought, yep. but he couldn't spend his whole time healing people. That's right. Cause there was other good to be done. That was more of a higher priority. So little subjective. Mm -hmm. And we need to live it there.